Well, welcome to a new Harry's farm. And this time I'm going to give you a tour around the grassland we've got on the farm up here. So we're, the whole farm is just over 400 acres and the grass is about 80 acres of that. And majority is actually permanent pasture. Although when we bought the farm in 2002, one of the first things we did was enter into a, a countryside stewardship scheme, it's termed, in 2004. And Part of that was to enhance the grassland. There's um, sort of a, a grants available to farm in a particular way the grassland. Um, and this is one of the fields that was known as arable reversion. So this was an arable field when we bought the farm and then we put it back to grass. And we've actually tried to um, increase the diversity. So it's, it's now classed as species rich semi-natural grassland, quite a mouthful. The whole farm is actual fact now registered with the Soil Association and it was organic. Sorry, the grassland is, the 80 acres. Um, because I have the cattle and the sheep you see here aren't actually mine. I have someone who uh, rents this grassland off me. We work together and he's fully organic. And it's, it's amazing to see the transformation and how the grass changes. Because all the grassland through here hasn't had any fertilizer, uh, any herbicides, nothing. It's all utterly natural grassland and the diversity is extraordinary. I'll take you down and have a closer look. If, you, if you're doing a dairy farm or really intensive farming, you plant a rye grass, Italian rye grass, which bulks out. It's the bulkiest um, uh, grass um, there is. But here we've got these fescues, see these sort of lighter, uh, you can see the seeds on top, they sort of blow in the wind, they're known as fescues. That's a, a sort of tougher grass and more um, traditional for this area. But there's everything. I can look at, um, well there's red clover here. So red clover, if you're organic, um, red clover, uh, it's very clever, it fixes nitrogen. It has uh, little nodules on it and that actually enhances the rest of the grass because it, it puts nitrogen in the soil naturally. So you want a mix of red clover in here. I think there's some white clover in here I saw as well. But there's everything. Um, there's plant in here, there's a wild carrot. This is a wild carrot here. Um, you probably see it. it looks like yarrow, it's very similar. Um, buttercups I can see there if I get up we can see yellow buttercups here down here more red, red clover but this is the one I want to show you this is bird's foot trefoil this is a very interesting plant because the latest research has it that this plant actually reduces the amount of methane a cow produces when it's munching on this sward and as you haven't, uh, you probably noticed, the news recently has been full of um, beef production and how it affects uh, global warming, etc. And it's a bit of a pet subject, mine, the global warming, because I'm, as you probably know, I'm from automotive background and um, journalist with Evo, etc., and a consultant to the motor industry. And it's obviously a very big topic there as well. And some recently farming has got. Um, press that it's also part of this global warming issues and how we're going to change our farming practice. Well I, you have to go back to basics but this this sort of farming as I'm going to show you now we're going to show you a suckler herd further down the valley I think is basically the answer. Um, I don't think beef pro, uh, farming is actually the problem. Um, I think we have a very sustainable way of producing beef in the UK and I'm going to talk about a bit more about that when we go and see the cattle. But anyway, this whole diversity of this swarm, the, the idea is the cows are super healthy uh, because it's like having a muesli or a granola to eat. They're having a pure just grass diet. They have everything, all sorts of extra nutrients etc that all these plants um, give you if you were munching around here, which I'm not because I'll leave that to the cows. Okay, well now I'm going to take you down the valley and we're going to have a look at the cattle. Um, but you're going to, I'm going to introduce you to this. This is my um, farm transport which I use. I have a, a string of bikes. So I'm going to swap cameras because on the mics, when I go on trips abroad, I, the, the helmet has its own camera and I can chat away. So you're now going to join me in the helmet and we'll go down the valley. Now join me in helmet cam. Um, this, as I say, is a 1983 uh, Honda. Um, and you didn't get electric start with this model, so it's a oh, 600 that um, is a very good starter, he says. And there we go. I like using this because they're, they're really light. Uh, this is about 120 kilos, this bike. 
so with me on it, it hardly leaves a mark. Right, we go out here. And because the um, grass is organic, I have to use, leave this sort of four metre buffer zone. So this is conventionally farmed arable land. Um, I've scratched it all up, as you can see. And then it means there's this buffer between conventional farming and the organic land, which is down in the valley there. Um, the chap, these are uh, Cambridge sheep, and they ha they're noted because they often have triplets. And David is telling me that they sell 2.2 lambs per ewe at the end of the year, reared, which is remarkable. Um, David also farms the other side of the valley. So this is completely or organic through here, um, as I say. Never had fertiliser on it, well, certainly since I've been here, which was um, 2002, and probably many years before that. Right, I'm going to take you down here. Well, this isn't fun at all, of course. And we'll go and have a look at the other end of the farm. We'll be combined, hopefully, later this week. I remember when I first came down here uh, when we bought the farm and I got to this gate and it was one of those moments I said oh, I'm going to buy this farm because it was so traditional it's like a time warp this area I just love that stone post that old stone gate post Can you imagine how long that's been there again all very traditional <clears throat> down here as well this is thing about permanent pasture, we're talking about how we're rearing beef in this country. As I say, this grassland here, I can't farm this Arab, with arable. The beef is actually the best um, use for this land. It's actually making use of land that wouldn't otherwise be used. You can see the clover here. And you also see, as you go down the bottom, because this is flood meadows, you see how the grass just gets stronger in the valley down here. Lots of clover down here, just more lush because the, the soil's better because it gets picks up whatever the stream when it floods, it just puts um, silt down here. And you just get a, a better sort of grass. Quickly take you down here. You see these, these are the cattle. They like, they like a habit of always walking in the same place. So you get these sort of lines where the cattle walk up and down the valley. Just some in here. This is normally got water in it, but because it was so dry last year, and then the winter rains never actually filled the aqua uh, fields un underground up, and now we're having real problems because this is normally the water that the cattle drink, and we can't shut this field off because there's no water in it because the streams it's droughted out. Love these old forms. It's just the cattle walking up here. Here we go. Up we go. Up, and you follow these lines. Cows and um, steep hillsides. Um, they they never actually go straight down a steep side like this because it's um, the actual mechanics of a cow don't work on slopes. So you get these tracks like we're on now these sort of walkways going along the hill because a cow weighs quite a lot you know we're talking well, potentially well, you don't want to go in there um, well 500 kilos 600 kilos for a fully grown cow you can see also the diversity um, there we go there's that um, bird's foot trefoil there um, knapweed there oh, plenty thistle but you can see also the fescues here as well as you go down here I mean this this is untouched, this ground. This has always been here for hundreds of years, um, grazing cattle along here. Oh, this makes me <laughs> laugh. You see, they walk along here, and then they see these hawthorns here, and I think that's their scratching post. It's like an itch post, so they walk through there. I'm not going through on the bike, because uh, I'll get spiked by the hawthorn, but for a cow, I think they quite like that bit. Oh, there you go, look at that, that uh, field mushroom up there. Good size. I might have that on the way back. But yeah, very traditional grassland all along here. And this, of course, is way steeper than you'd ever imagine. I can remember when we looked at the farm, the agent saying, really sorry, 25% of the grassland um, is inaccessible by tractor. And because I love bikes, I said, fantastic. 
so that was the right thing to hear and there are the cows they're um, Sussex cattle that field has actually got a little away from them it, we've had so much rain this autumn it's been an extraordinary year for grass growth and uh, it's a bit longer than we would like um, but there you go it's just lovely around here this valley I just love it down here it's like a forgotten world um, and then yeah with the cattle there just looking you just sense that your same vista would have been here you know four four five hundred years ago just cattle grazing through the valley just lovely right anyway let's go I'm going to swap cameras again and I'll take you to show the cattle a bit more close up okay well these are the cattle this is um, a herd of Sussex cattle and this is a suckler herd and a suckler herd is the most traditional way of rearing beef cattle um, these are all mums and they will calf they're all in calf and they're due to calf in the next six weeks or so and once they have the calf the calf stays with mum right through until it's um, she's ready to um, have another calf so sh sh the the cows here so this is August so they'll be born end of September something like that and then they they have to go off these fields in October November part of the thing uh, with a stewardship agreement because it poaches up the land damages the land and then next April they will come back out here with their calves at foot and the calves will suckle off mum as they've been doing for the winter and eat grass and get big and strong and then they'll be weaned off and then she'll have another calf and it continues and these cows will have 10 or 12 calves down here so they'll be here for 10 12 years well they'll be two years old at least when they're in calf so 14 15 years they will spend their time in this valley you see this cow i can tell she's pretty close to calving because you'll see she's got quite a belly she's quite quite big so she's probably one of the first to calve looking at her she looks quite wide they tend to only have one calf it's very unusual to have twin calves um, but yeah really nice what how you tell a beef animal compared to a dairy animal they're just stockier they're squarer um, they're made of squares as one um, farmer used to tell me rather than triangles and you can sort of see that with these Sussex cattle um, they use two bulls here they use either a South Devon if they're going to do beef or they've put a pedigree Sussex if they've got a really good cow and they want to breed um, hope for um, um, a calf a female calf from her to keep uh, follow on and to actually bring into the herd at a later date um, if you get the a boy or girl calf doesn't really matter for the suckler herd you just bring it up to um, fattening weight so after the year it's been with mum it then grazes grass for uh, another year or 18 months before it's up, up to processing weight and then the process continues but just lovely cattle these quite often also beef animals tend to have um, browns they're sort of um, single colour the Holstein and the Frisian dominate the dairy world uh, black and white and they just look bonier um, bigger as bony uh, cattle because they have something called sort of milking off the back all they're bred for is really to produce milk and uh, they do that by almost losing body condition to produce the milk and then you bring them up to condition uh, put get them in calf again and it off goes again different with a sucker herd like this this is a very traditional way of farming and i absolutely love having these on the farm it's just just feels right having having these graze the grass and like this and this grass and that hasn't been touched and just watching the sward change um, as more uh, wildflowers and um, different species come in really nice you manage it also by the grazing so there are periods when we don't graze the fields at all to give the wildflowers a chance to um, come up and flower and then get seed heads on them and then you actually put the cattle back in um, because they stamp in the seeds into the ground and then hopefully and you leave it over winter and the rain and etc and the seeds take and you get more mix in your sward more wildflowers appearing that's how it all works this is the most traditional way of raising beef and it is very common in the UK and that recent report the IPCC that everybody seemed to get very upset about about red meat production was saying we need to cut down red meat because it's um, a global warming and what was behind that report is a lot of the world 
doesn't produce beef like this. The thing about global warming, remember, is that tag at the top, it's global. It's not a UK thing, it's a global thing. The planet cares what's happening on a global basis, not just what's happening in the UK. And other parts of the world do not raise beef like we do here. Um, they are in, held in, um, they're indoors and they're fed concentrates and out in Argentina, Brazil, etc. They're now clearing Amazon um, rainforests and they're either grazing the animals intensively to the beyond the ground's capability or they're feeding soya, etc. and raising beef like that on concentrates. These guys don't see any of that, they're just grass fed. It's the same in Ireland, it's the same in Scotland. Um, and it's utilising this, these fields that I can't use for arable production. So yes, they produce the methane, but the other thing everybody forgets is this secretion, this, this um, bringing carbon, locking carbon up. This grass, photosynthesised, absorbs CO2 and locks away carbon. And the more they graze it, the more the grass grows and the more CO2 is absorbed into the grassland and it's the bit that people forget and beef cattle raised like this the, the um, they would say oh it actually produces more methane because they actually take longer to finish as it's termed longer um, to get up to the weight where they go off for processing um, against uh, soil fed beef or, um, as they might do in other parts of the world but actually for the environment that is really um, hard because you've grown crops you've applied fertilizer um, and it's much more intensive on CO2 production. And that is actually what that IPCC report was like, um, was saying, was it's that sort of beef production has got to stop. This is, for me, is the solution going forward. This is traditional beef. This was probably going on in this valley 500 years uh, ago, and it will probably continue in another 200 years time. It's, it's completely sustainable. It's not reliant on fossil fuels in any way. The only time they see any fossil fuel involvement is when they're actually being transported somewhere, where you could walk them down the road if we run out of um, diesel fuel. So this scene will go on forever. So there you go. I hope that's given you a bit more background on the grassland here, how it all works on the farm. We'll watch these guys as they develop, when the calves arrive, etc. And you'll be seeing a bit more of the sheep as well. So I hope you enjoy this issue of Harry's Farm, giving you a bit more interest in the grassland. I'll be doing more videos, so I hope to see you soon.